Hi, my King Chavez friends. This is Ms. Homan from Room 9. I am here to bring you another art project this week. We are going to have a lot of fun. We're going to use a lot of imagination for this one. But you are going to need some supplies. You are going to need a blank piece of paper, something to draw with. I am using a black pen. You can use a pen, a black colored pencil, a regular pencil, a black crayon. Something, though, that when you color over it, you'll still be able to see it. Um, you're also going to need something to color with and your imagination. So make sure that is clicked on while you go ahead and pause the video, grab your supplies, and I will be here waiting, waiting and ready for you. We are all ready to go. Here is a piece of paper that I'm going to use. I just realized my other one had something on it. So if we have the whole size of the paper, we're going to go about a third of the way up. So if you were to imagine your paper in three different parts, and all we're gonna do is draw a line, and it does not have to be a straight line. So we are going to draw a line. This line is going to be the ground, which is why I said it does not have to be straight. Now we're going to draw a spiral. So let's think, what is a spiral? So we're gonna start right here in the middle, and we're just gonna spiral out and out and out all the way to the bot so it touches the ground and then just slowly close it off hmm what animal do you think we might be drawing you're right we are drawing another snail so we're going to go right here and we need to draw his snail tail so we're going to start right here in that little teeny part between his shell and the ground and we're going to think about what does a snail slug tail look like and then we're going to close it back up and then we're going to do the same thing on the front but on the front we're going to go higher because it's his head but not super high because we need space for his eyeballs and we're just gonna make a curve around and then come on back down and close it back up at the bottom again. Don't forget, snail eyes are on top of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw one circle, two circles for my little snail eyes. What's he missing? This is not a real snail, so we can make him have a smiley face. So, are we done? Hmm, I don't think so, because I said we were gonna need imagination and color. We don't have either one of those yet. So, we need to take this shell, this spiral, and we're gonna break it into a couple different parts, and I'm gonna show you how. We're just gonna draw some lines. And they don't have to all be the same. They can be different sizes, these spaces. So I'm gonna make this one kind of a bigger space. And then I'm gonna do one more here. Now, the reason that we did that is because we are now gonna add patterns. Now you can use any pattern you want. You can do polka dots, you can do circles, you can do flowers, zigzags, check marks, however you want to do the inside of your snail, but you wanna have different patterns in each section. Or if you're gonna use the same pattern, how can you make them appear different? So that's something that you're gonna to wanna to use your brain for to think about maybe you wanna do polka dots in two different spaces, but you can color them different or they can be different sizes. So I am going to start in the smallest one and I am going to do these. Now, the reason I said you wanted something dark is because when I color over this, I don't want those Vs to disappear. Hmm, what do I want to do here? Here, I'm going to do some waves. Uh, I'm going to change my mind just a little, and I'm going to go all the way from side to side. So the waves that I already started, I'm just going to keep going. This is my next section. I think I'm going to do big polka dots. 
here. This is a bigger section. So this might be a really great place for some stripes. Now see, these are stripes and these are stripes, but I made them different because I made these ones wavy. Um, this big section right here, hmm, it's a lot of space to fill. So I am going to do square kind of like polka dots. So I'm gonna make them, and if you notice, they're not really big, so I'm leaving lots of space between them to color. This one right here, hmm, let me think, let me think. I'm gonna do like, kind of like brown lines, something that we kind of use in our optical illusion where we made our curve lines. They're not really brown lines. They're like clouds. And I'm gonna do some that go the other way too. So I have all these different spaces to color. And in my very last section, hmm, I am going to do hearts. Now remember when you're doing these, like I was just realizing when I was drawing these hearts that I drew them really small. So I have to do one of two things. I either have to leave them white in the middle and just color around them. <coughs> I need to be very careful with my coloring. Now, my patterns are done. This is a good time for when you're doing it to take a break and really think about your patterns, not just necessarily copy mine. Um, I'm gonna do something that's a little different and I'm gonna add a pattern to my ground. So, hmm. I am going to do some vertical stripes and then I'm going to do some horizontal stripes and then another vertical and now that I see that I'm going to go ahead and line that up and then I'm going to do some horizontal stripes here and if you notice my spacing on all of them is different. So I'm making a pattern but it is a little bit different. My drawing is finished. Now I need to color it. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to color the body part of my slug first. Now I wanted to make it realistic. I could, but it's a snail that has patterns all over its shell. So it's not going to be a very real, realistic looking snail to begin with. So I'm not going to pick a realistic color for his body. I'm going to go ahead and pick this red violet just because it's really, really bright. So I went ahead and did that, and then I'm going to go ahead and color his little eyes, because why not? Okay, now I have to start thinking, how do I want to color in these patterns? So I'm going to pick a few colors. I have just plain red. I'm going to go ahead and color in my polka dots with my plain red. And I'm going to pick this sea green, which is not something we have in our regular school crayons. I just have this box at home and it has sea green in it. I'm going to use that to color in my squares. I picked this one because it still has a really good point on it to color in my hearts. 
because I decided I did not want to leave them white. So I did all of my small details first so that I can go back in with my big color crayon, my big color lines. And I don't have to do a really, really, I don't have to be really, really super careful around those spots because they're already colored in. So I'm going to go ahead and finish coloring mine. You go ahead and finish coloring yours. I am super excited to see what you do. I'm going to keep coloring here on the video with you for a little bit, and then I'll come back, finish up with you. But this is a great time that we can just color together. So friends, you can see I've used lots of different colors and I'm going to keep going so you don't need to watch me finish coloring. This is your time to just be creative. Make sure that you use lots of color in your drawing, but also you can use some of that white. So for example, I think I'm going to leave some of this in between part down here white because we can't color white on white paper but you can still use white, but make sure you do add some really great colors. I am looking forward to everything that you guys are going to share on your um, Flipgrid or your class story. So I'm really looking forward to what that's gonna look like. I will make sure that you guys get to see my finished product. It will probably be at the very end of this video. Um, I love you all. I'm so excited to be doing art with you again. And I look forward to seeing your snazzy snail. Bye, guys.